just so i had this interesting it. case um a uh, 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 old man around 80 years old who i was operating and uh, we were doing a topical surgery and he started complaining of pain during surgery and we supplemented with uh, intraocular lignocaine and finally there was so much pain that uh, i had just finished the fecal emulsification and i finally decided that i won't go ahead with the iol because something seems to be wrong and we got him out of the theater and on indirect ophthalmoscopy we found out he had a supracoronal hemorrhage and right. we treated uh, we showed it to our retinal specialist she said uh, we'll give oral uh, uh, steroids which went on for 6 weeks and for 6 weeks we took him up for surgery for the iol implantation excellent very good but but did you notice any other clinical signs in anterior segment apart from the subjective pain did you find that the surgery was getting difficult or 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 the space that was cramped up nothing no. this was, Not, well, this was so, only pain so i think this is rather unusual i would say for for an uh, subcoroidal hemorrhage threatening uh, the eye uh, technically and or you know mechanically so remember abhijit's case if the anesthetists are not able to good to go sir the pain, the pain uh, you you think of it just remember abhijit talking to us on this very very rare condition where no other signs in the eye during surgery but just the pain which was not able to control so thanks abhijit we are ready now uh, shekhar sorry for this interruption but you have enough time don't worry you can extend this uh, as i'm told by rajesh so go ahead finish your uh, talk please uh, uh so good uh, good afternoon again i am going to talk on hitting the refractive target in extreme corneal and axial profiles uh, i have divided subdivided the topic into a uh, few uh, points the first is the iol power in corneal ectasia this is the new challenge ophthalmologists are facing and it includes variety of cases keratoconus with or without procedure post lasik uh, ectasia without without any procedure keratoglobus pmd what are the challenges uh, getting the k reading consistently is not all that easy ap ratio is altered we get a false uh, deep acd and therefore elp prediction becomes difficult and prior refractive surgery in intex they we don't know whether it complicates the matter or simplifies so first point is decide about the toricity if the central 3 mm of the topo shows regular astigmatism we can safely go ahead with the toric iol and the aim is uh, debulking debulking the astigmatism of course we have to get repeatable k readings uh, at, from at least two machines now uh, previously we have been cl uh, classifying keratoconus or ectasia according to mainly topography but now we have a different classification and one of the uh, which i find best is retics classification because it it's kind of holistic it includes uh, visual acuity k reading astigmatism coma as well as q value and uh, just to give an example this is a patient we had of keratoconus with a uh, cdva of uh, 0.98 and a cylinder of minus 4 so with a okay kind of a topography so we decided to go uh, straight ahead with the uh, calculation for cataract surgery and we use regression formula with ekr 4.5 of course we can also use barrett truke barrett truke tk with ssocd rate tracing not much experience now we are then comes the uh, second okay uh, now there is a paper published which says that in barrett truke you are, we better go by measured pca rather than the estimated and that is further enhanced by the fact that when we use barrett truke tk that is total keratometry the number of patients who are within plus or point 5 plus or minus point 5 of emetropia went up by whopping 12% which is a very big percentage then we go to the second category that is the moderate keratoconus where then there is a two step approach number one we have to do something to smoothing the cornea either by topo guided prk or by intax and then go by the way we went for the first grade of cornea and the last okay and the, there is a new concept of ceoz that is central effective optical zone which has been used previously for um 
calculations while doing RK. So we have to select a visual axis, actually map it out on the depending upon various factors, including visual axis, an average of 12 points on the 2.7 or 3 millimeter circle, basically to find out the central corneal path. And then the third, uh, the, when the keratoconus is uh, quite severe at advance, there are three scenarios here. Patient is happy with poor vision, undiagnosed keratoconus, put a multi monofocal IL and leave him alone. Contact lens happy patient, don't try to fix, which does not require fixing. So again, go for monofocal IL uh, and, and contact lens. And third is safety. When you are really not sure about the calculations, again, go take a conservative approach. So the take home message is that we uh, better to use retics classification, decide toricity first, and depending upon the uh, type of ectasia, mild, straight away go for calculations, moderate, smoothing procedure, and severe, uh, severe uh, conservative approach. The second top, uh, part of the topic is IL power, uh, power calculation post refractive surgery. Uh, sources of error, I'm not going to go into the detail and same about the older method. Let us talk about the newer methods that is EKR, Hygis L, Barrett Ruke, TK, and SSOCT. Hygis L uh, is a, the first kind of formula we got ready made where it uses the central uh, intermediate corneal power to and uses some regression analysis uh, differently in hyperopic and differently in myopic LASIK to find out what K to use in Hygis formula and gives us a IL power. So it was uh, quite accurate. And then uh, EKR I'll come to shortly and the other two also I'll come to shortly. Uh, very well that Barrett Ruke and Barrett Ruke TK, they, we don't know how they work, but they are really very good. Um, then there is aura intra operative corneal power calculation. Let us skip this because I feel that it is in the nascent stage. Now, EKR or the holiday report, which is a part of the Pentacam. Okay, uh, it is a EKR stands for equivalent K readings. I uh, most of us know by now, and this is the holiday report which comes very exhaustive and is one of the finest tools in the middle upper panel. You get the EKR that is equivalent carrying. Now, what is EKR? Uh, when we use the regression formula, we could not, uh, we had to use a, a corneal refractive index of 1.3375, which is not actually correct, but as a matter of compromise, we had to use. Now, when we have got uh, all the corneal ratios and things altered, uh, we cannot use that. And therefore, uh, what we, what reading we get, uh, corneal power that has to be converted so that it can be used in the regression formula which use uh, corneal refractive index of 1.3375 and these converted readings are called as EKR. So uh, holiday report has made it very simple for us and why 4.5 because this correlates best with the central corneal power. So uh, you get a topography here and then the pachymetry and then the uh, elevation. So whatever you require, everything is there on the single screen. And it's a very, very useful tool, as I already said. For touristy, of course, we look at the axial or the sagittal curvature. So uh, use it for any abnormal cornea, post-PKP, post-refractive surgery, ectasia, cornea scar, irregular astigmatism. Now, this is an example of the EKR report of a normal patient. You can see a single spike. So very good case because patient has a very single uh, power at the center. When it goes to LASIK, it is slightly not as good as the normal spike, but still acceptable. But look at RK. There is a dioptric change of 13 diopters across the pupil size. And that is why calculations in radial keratotomy are difficult. So conclusion, uh, use EKR 65 or 4.5 mm report. Only if uh, the pupil is small, you go for a different diameter. This is a case of post LASIK uh, case. Uh, at, uh, at our hospital, um, EKR, then similarly, a PMD case. Uh, then what about newer machines and newer formulae? So Ion Master 700 is the first came with a very new technology whereby anterior cornea is measured by the tele, uh, telecentric keratometry, which is modification of the traditional method. And the posterior cornea was actually measured by SSOCT. And it chooses the right kind of refractive index for the right kind of formula. Uh, and then we have new new kid on the block, MS39. Uh, it's a combination of Placido 
plus SSOCD. Anterior cornea is uh, checked by, measured by Placido as well as SSOCD because we know that Placido has a blind spot in the center. And posterior uh, SSOCD also checks posterior cornea, ACD, lens technology, uh, lens thickness. It is a ray tracing technology, but which formula it uses, uh, we do not know. Yeah, again, it is a very useful uh, tool. Uh, since installation, I have not had a chance to use on any patients, but this is how the printout looks like. Now, let us look at the efficacy of the various formula post LASI. Uh, we can see that almost all of them are, uh, you know, in a tight range, but even then, Barrett Truque appears to be better. Um, so, the best practices is calculate oil power by multiple methods, take average, but bias towards Barrett. Uh, Truque and aim for undercorrection. These are the we website where the all the calculators are available. On ASCRS, you go choose which procedure has been done before, and this is the form. It is very important to read the instructions at the bottom and fill in as many details as possible. Form for RK Barry Truque. I need not explain. We have gone through all this many times, and they all work very well. Now, as an example. 43 year old male patient came for cataract LASIK and undergone LASIK in 2001. Okay. And this was the ASARS printout. And then you can see Barrett, uh, Barrett, Truke, and TK both uh, suggesting 17.5 ultrasound IQ. So, him was implanted, patient was 69. Okay. So, as far as myopic LASIK is concerned, we are bang on target, but not so with, uh, with RK. Uh, because of it is the uh, hyperopic drift it has undergone over the years and the post surgery the cuts undergo edema and there is a hyperopic uh, temporary hyperopic shift very low k out of bounds for many machines and many calculators and then you have to go rely on contactless method we have to aim for slight myopia best practices is go to a crs which uh, uses the arambari uh, double k method and barrett uh, online calculators and choose the average now, uh, it is very important to examine the patient on slit lamp and understand the risk factors where you can go horribly wrong or, you know, uh, probably horrible is not a correct way, you know, very badly wrong uh, of the target. Uh, so, these risk factors are when the patient has got more than 16 cuts, 16 or more, optical zone of less than 3 millimeters, RK cuts going all the way up to the limbus, when there is an astigmatic keratomy crossing of incisions, Irregular axiomism on the central part of the topography and unstable tear film, which is almost always the case. And uh, this I already explained that some equipments do not accept uh, low care readings. And therefore, we have to be very well prepared for the second surgery. Sometimes the RK cuts open during surgery and the astigmatism management goes for a toss. So the previous approach was leave behind hyperopia um, and then do PRK. So that uh, for hyperopic PRK, we'll be shifting the K readings from 29, let's say from 2 to 34, which will improve the quality of vision. But the problem is that because of RK cuts can, uh, you know, have a leakage of mitomycin C into the entry chamber, we cannot use the mitomycin C and there are very, very high chances of regression. So the best method today is a secondary polypseudophakia or the PUA appearances. Now, post RK, if you see, uh, again, the various formulae, they show that they are very tight uh, in prediction. But in reality, this is not the case. It really goes everywhere. Uh, so sometimes you have to go really back to back to basics. At, that means using an algorithm. That is calculate IOL power as if it is a virgin eye. And for 4 to 6 cut RK, you add 1.5 to the IOL power. 8 cut RK, you add 2. And more than 8 cuts, you add more. Now, this is one example of an eight cut RK patient had a refraction of uh, RK undergone in 1998. The refraction we had done on 16 February 2021. Patient had 7.5 and 8.5 spherical plus with a minus two cylinder. Now you can see the IOL powers are going helter skelter. Okay, every uh, the there is a wide range of which the IOL power has been suggested, but Barrett took a suggested 32.1 in the right hand, 34.95 in the left hand. And uh, same was suggested by, okay, so we went by, we wanted, patient wanted panoptics, patient was consulted for second surgery, 
and the uh, iol power uh, put in was uh, 30 diopter parameter because that was the highest available and in the right eye patient is left with 3.75 cylinder and the left eye sphere so in the right eye we have gone wrong on cylinder and in the left eye we have gone wrong on sp uh, sphere so this is what happens that you know you do not know exactly where we are going and it is better to counsel the patient for the second surgery when it comes to torigal post refractive surgery barret truke or barret truke tk uh, you know toric uh, there is nothing else period the discussion is over it works the best uh, i mean barret truke toric hmm? uh, then this is a case of pkp again the same way we can calculate and corneal scar then we go to the next sub topic is iol power calculation in extreme myopia there are two challenges here the vitreous body is long and therefore it or it is the axial length and that's why we have to use vancock adjustment in the traditional formula uh, second problem is posterior staphyloma fovea is lying on the slope and we do not want anatomical axial length we want functional axial length that means the corneal apex and the fovea the line connecting that the distance between them and the solution is optical biometry with visualization of the optic pit now uh, best practices use your uh, barrett universal 2 and hill rbf for calculations uh, both do not require vancock adjustment i would like to mention something about barrett universal 2 why the word universal uh, minus lens, minus power lenses they are thick edges and thin in the center and they see differently in the eye as compared to normal lenses and they behave differently so barrett uh, did a very smart thing that he did optimization for this particular sector of IL powers and that is why the formula is called truly, truly like universal um, you know power calculator barrets and whenever only you are out of bounds you can use all these uh, older formula with Bangkok modification and always aim for my myopia now this is a very very int interesting slide which tells us about efficacy of various formulae the latest formulae in percentage where we have hit a, a target of less plus or minus 0.5 so when you talk about entire range you can see that all are above 80 uh, short eyes uh, we come down uh, but all are about 70 and uh, but over uh, and uh, long eyes again all we go, go below 80 um, above 80 ultra long guys i did not get the percentage but evo, EVO stands rank, uh, to rank number one and Barrett University stands to rank number two. Okay, this is like surmise of various papers I have read. Um, so what, the, what it tells us that ultimately we have to calculate by multiple choices and go for the average with uh, bias towards Barrett. Now this is one case, uh, minus 18 diopters in the right eye and minus 16 diopters in the left eye. IOL power suggested was five diopters by Hill RBF and Universal to Barrett. And we implanted five diopter lens and patient was with the desired result. Um, more myopia in the right eye and less myopia in the left eye, but with a little bit of cylinder. Then we go to hyperopia. The challenges are different in very short eyes. Uh, I'm talking only about IOL power calculation. The, the natural lens is thicker, but other dimensions are smaller. And very small change in the any dimension will give you drastic change in the IOL power. So we have to be very precise about measurements. Similarly, the high D lenses are thick and uh, the calculation algorithms are based on infinitely thin lenses. And therefore we have to be careful again about the calculations. For an example, if there is a one millimeter error in the AC depth, in myo, we will go, will be off target by one diopter, but in hypermetro or short edge, we will be off target by 2.5 diopters. Again, we come to the same table which I showed before. That is the reason why you see in short eyes uh, the accuracy percentage has dropped by, down by almost 10. Uh, this is an example of hyperopia. Uh, bilaterally amblyopic patient, he was, uh, it was actually a case of prelex. Patient was very consulted very well that there will be not much improvement in vision, but he was very keen on surgery. And uh, every uh, again, different type of lenses suggested. If you see, if you go by average, the average came to 32.5, uh, but we patient wanted um, uh, 
acrylisa tree uh, trifocal and 32 was the available one with without any extra premium so we went ahead with that and patient was bang on target now the last topic of the day the primary polysudofficia sometimes we get a situation that one lens is not enough to put in the eye and you require two lenses to support uh, to get to hematropia so this is uh, uh, dr warren hill has divided this into a, you know a very simple topic that there are only six steps number one get an ac accurate axial uh, length estimation second to uh, find out the total ial power required and third find out the deficiency by the lowest number of ial available in the particular category you want to implant and then there is a fourth is simple table for conversion of the remaining data how much to use and we can also use refractive for uh, virgins formula and point number 6 choosing the correct ial that means acrylic lens goes in the bag and silicon lens sits in the sulcus and this is the table it is very well available on dr warren hill's website and uh, the last is the paper which talks in great detail uh, about uh, virgins formula it's a very very uh, you know nice and path breaking paper thank you very much shekhar uh... i know words to tell you you were so thorough and i don't qualify to ask any question or comment because i don't understand most of the things you said but wonderful what i understood was conclusion that if you have any such eyes please contact uh, dr bavikar he will help you okay any comments rajesh and any other person that uh, want to comment on this aspect of calculation in these very difficult eyes i think uh, Just, like yeah. both of us uh, what we have realized is that whether fortunately due to dr bavikar and other stalwarts life has become quite easy for the average ophthalmologist if you learn to use the online formulas so whether you understand the physics behind the calculation or not if you generally follow the scrs calculator and the barrett's true k you usually end up in a fairly good range at least in the post myopic eyes rk like uh, uh, the sir said is can be a can be variable even in the best of hands i would suggest an apscrs website as well because it has some more information and easy to use than ascrs so remember ascrs and apscrs website yes uh, rajesh you wanted to say something uh, no nothing much sir. it was actually a uh, wonderful webinar a lot of things to be learned a lot of things that you know we have to go back and uh, once again uh, read to understand what all has been discussed so uh, it was very useful and uh, yeah dr nishan wants to, wants to say something uh, just going out of context uh, uh, dr vavikar sir was talking about polysudofficia i have had two cases where i have implanted an ipcl for uh, post uh, cataract uh, pseudofficia and uh, the calculations are bang on you give the patients detail to the company and they'll give you an ipcl which can be put in the sulcus because they are made for sulcus implantation and uh, they are working well okay i am open to any discussion and suggestions about it okay any other yeah. any comments or any other questions on the okay. other subject i just have two things that from sir's talk one message that comes out is that as a general rule if you go with barrett formula for all the spectrum you will be quite okay but yeah if you are dealing the other very important thing is that when you are dealing with the special eyes you may not be doing toric or multifocal but please use the right technology and if you don't have access to it which is okay you may not have access to the il master 700 or pentacam but these are the eyes where we should work with our colleagues and get these measurements and then calculate so i think these cases deserve a lot of hard work and effort on the part of the surgeon so and refer them to your colleagues if you don't have access to all the diagnostics because that will make it much better for all of us any other comments before uh, we conclude is there is there any other option other than an ekr for uh, work up for the cornea in these cases the shaker uh, uh, yes abhijit now uh, because of the online calculators uh it has become fairly easy um again what uh, dr vasada sir said the same thing you can go to aps rs which website um it is available on most of the instruments also today 
बट इफ यू गो ऑन ए सी आर एस एंड एफ सी ए पी एस सी आर एस वेबसाइट यू विल बी एबल टू गेट वेरी गुड रिजल्ट विद पुटिंग द वॉट एवर के वेल इज यू आर गेटिंग Okay, I think uh, uh, before I hand over to Rajesh to have a final remarks in Namrata, I just want to say that today uh, this was a wonderful session uh, because this was the in thing, the patient's demand. We want to deliver, and industry is keen to help us. So we learned about press bio, P I O L, and uh, uh, from Nishant we heard that uh, there are trifocals uh, kinds, and not all trifocals are same. Each trifocal has its plus and minus, and therefore uh, select the one. Uh, and same thing for ED of or extended depth of focus and range. Not all are same, and uh, the wave shape uh, changing thing appears to be very promising. However, the the stumbling block uh, to apply this in all potential monofocal uh, IOLs. It, to me, that lens is ideal for all the patients who want monofocal IOLs, but. what prohibits us is really the cost so i really urge here and take the opportunity uh, because it's sponsored or supported by alcon to keep that mind once again and take this issue once again uh, wherever you can and and bring back and solve and help us to help you guys uh, and and remember uh, what shaker said you may not remember anything he said because it's too difficult but that the online thing has made our life so easy so rakesh please uh, i hand over to you so i'll just do my duty to thank you all it was a wonderful webinar wonderful talks starting from the first to i mean the difficult situations to everything so a big thanks to all of you a lot of things to learn a lot of uh, wonderful uh, teaching and the wonderful pearls that you gave sir that was again uh, that will be of great help to everyone so thank you all and uh, i would like to thank the admin team uh, led by dr anand sethi and uh, kripal rana and of course uh, alcon for supporting this webinar so thanks to one and all thank you bye thank bye you. thank you thank you thank all you. all the thank best you. thank you